Okay. You can have a fight with them afterwards, okay? I just want to answer the question I asked in the first place. Can I hear three that I can completely stay from getting with you now? I can't really hear anybody without saying from from the camera. No, he's being very much the camera. No, but he knows that it will contribute to, to any further elements yeah. I have. Right, okay, look. George is going to summarise in a minute, but there's a man here really bugging me. I know he's very scared. Fine, Steve. Seriously, that's what he's saying to do with this one. Answer the problem people have. What's up? Over the next few years, and it transpires that these people are right, and George Carlin was right. And we've ignored them and ignored them and ignored them and ignored them. Who's going to be responsible? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. I, the reason that we're interested in this is trying to find out and, and take it forward. And we're all doing little bits and we've got constituents and battles away. And we do it and we talk to ministers about planning rights and so on. And you can see it kind of moving but not fast enough from the point of view of people like you. And, you know, we've got to get a lot of our colleagues on site too. So I don't want you to a local MP that you should go and talk to sensibly about it. And, you know, see if you... They don't listen. They don't they ignore you. They say there is no evidence because Michael Clark of the HPA says there is no evidence. I'm not going to mention Devon Matthews here, but I'm going to Professor Highland says it's an obscene spectacle when Michael Clark is sent to public meetings. Okay, I know the problem. Michael Clark says that he's, their company is independent. They're being paid by the phone companies. How many, how many MPs are here? Would they raise their hands to see how many MPs are here? You want to ten lobbyists to every MP. No MPs here. Well, there's Anders. Oh, one. He's stuck in the middle there. He's interested in up and he's into IT technology and stuff. Richard was an MP when he was a nice chap. Is that because most of them don't don't want to be able to be held to account by by knowing? Mm. They don't want to know. If they seem to know what happened, they can then be held to account later. Is that why there are so few MPs here? Mm. <coughs> right. Okay. All right. That's fine. Uh, are you all right, Brian? You okay? You made your point. You got that. So George is going to sum up in two minutes, and I mean two minutes, and then Ireland wants to say something and try and move something. Okay. In, in, in summary, first, thank you very much for inviting me. I, I, I'm very honoured to be able to be here. The thing that, that I'm observing is that people are asking researchers to do things that researchers don't do. Yes. And it's because you have something missing. You do not have a program that allows for doctors and treating doctors to be able to take the information and apply it efficiently and readily to patients. You need to have a different place to deal with clinical argument, diagnosis, intervention, and scientific argument. Patients should never be victimized by situations where scientists are mixing it up. I mean, I love to mix it up with Dr. Johnston and with Dr. Chalice, but that should never, that should never compromise patient care. And what's missing here is the clinical intervention research program that is necessary to address those clinical needs that are real. Those are medical problems that you have that are not being addressed. There are research programs in place, but the research programs do not solve the medical problems. So my recommendation is that you consider expanding what you have and perhaps adopting something similar to what we have with our Safe Wireless Project, with registries and interface with clinicians and develop a database that's based on the medical presentations. And then at some point, that database interfaces with the research database and you have your problem solved. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.
thank you again to Dr. Carlo and Ian Gibson and everyone for coming today. And I think we've, we've all learned a lot and we've got a lot of lessons to learn as well from, from what Dr. Carlo's done. And um, I'm going to have to whisk him off quickly because we're off to Dublin tonight and he's dressing all the Irish doctors tomorrow and they've sponsored an event. And we've got to rush off for a press, a live press um, TV interview for one of their prime time shows that's going out tonight. So you probably won't be able to stay as long as you'd like to. But uh, we've, we've drawn up a resolution with uh, the help of Alan Mayer, who's a lawyer who I'm sure most of you know. And this will give, I know we've only had one or two MPs in the room. Thank God we've had Ian Gibson and you've been along with well, here. Been Andrew Mitchell's been here as well. But I think that's a pretty poor show, knowing how serious this problem is and how concerned we are as a public. And knowing that their post bags are full with our letters. So I'd like to give them one more opportunity. And I think everybody should take this to them. And we've drawn up a resolution from the Radiation Research Trust to urgently encourage all the government departments of health, all the committees, to urgently encourage the reopening of the Stuart Report. And we want it to be reopened, looking urgently into addressing DHS, <coughs> Wi-Fi in our schools, and the planning procedure, which is completely in chaos. And that needs to be as a matter of emergency. And the ideas that George has brought with us for our medical doctors to now be educated immediately to start dealing with the problems that we are suffering with, I think it's fantastic and that's where it needs to go. So thank you. Well, if you agree to that, I'll make sure that Bill Stewart gets it, okay? And we take it from there and we'll move it through government and through the channels and see what happens and we keep the issue. The issue is still alive, it's just very slow but moving, that's all, from your point of view. So let's have a little bit of patience and by this time next year, let's hope it's all solved. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tom.